distinguished delegates, dear participants. After last year's Action Team 6 follow-up conference in Bonn, we are now uh, doing the second pilot in El Salvador, uh, especially the time zone for improving public health by application of space technology and open community approach. This second pilot is organized by the Embassy of El Salvador in Germany and the University of Koblenz-Landau in cooperation with uh, United Nations Office of Outer Space Affairs um, program on space applications. This presentation will provide an overview, uh, first starting with the history and origin of the workshop, the scope of the initiative, the time frame and the structure, open source, open content, an open community, what does it mean and how it is integrated in the concept of Action Team 6 follow-up initiative, what is the structure of joint resources and what are the, is uh, the workshop procedure um, and living labs. Living labs are user-driven participatory, multidisciplinary, multi-stakeholder research and implementation environments, in our case uh, tailored for public health risk mitigation. The Action Team 6 follow-up initiative um, is a three years initiative which has uh, two main pillars. One pillar is the UN COPUS uh, Scientific and Technical Subcommittee site meeting uh, every February of the, uh, the year in, in Vienna, which is a site meeting for political facilitation of public health risk mitigation. Uh, it is the interface for organization optimization of the structure of the three years initiatives. And the second pillar are the, the yearly workshops, international expert meetings, as a community of practice for public health risk mitigation. The Action Team 6 follow up initiative um, has the scope of spatial patterns of risk and resources in the field of epidemiology and ecotoxicology. The structure is designed as an interface between the political facilitator providing guidance and support for member state activities in an international community of practice which have the joint focus on public health risk mitigation. The Action Team 6 follow-up initiative is based on the Unispace 3 recommendation, especially recommendation 6, which says improve public health services. There are other recommendations like recommendation 7, which I mentioned later, um, that implement an integrated global system to manage natural disasters, relief and prevention efforts. Unispace 3 recommends different areas of application of space technology. Action teams focus on certain recommendations and to understand uh, the current status of the Member State Technivity Action Team 6. Um, I take an example of another recommendation 7 for implementation of integrated global system uh, managed to manage natural disasters. The Action Team 7 was established in 2001 and in 2006 uh, it became in U uh, the UN SPIDER program by resolution 6110 at the 14th December 2006 um, at the United Nations General Assembly. They agreed um, that UN SPIDER will focus on the recommendation as a program. In contrast to UN SPIDER, which is the United Nations program, Action Team 6 uh, is in a transition period, uh, which is currently a member state activity. Um, the action team was established in 2001 and was closed in 2012 by the Chair Canada and uh, now we are in the transition period um, where one site meeting at um, United Nations uh, Copios in 2012 took place, one site meeting in 2013 and one expert meeting at the UN campus in Bonn which was the first pilot of the Action Team 6 follow-up initiative. The current international expert meeting in the time zone of El Salvador is the second pilot. The pilots are organized in a low-cost environment to reduce the carbon footprint of the activities. 
Local or regional face-to-face -face meeting points are virtually connected to other international, local and regional meeting points. This reduces uh, the carbon footprint, and, but the whole concept has to be optimized step-by-step -step during the three years period of Action Team 6 follow-up initiative. Action Team 6 follow-up initiative is based on a resolution A6671 uh, uh, in 2012. It says, um, stress the need to look more closely into how advanced space research and exploration systems and technology could further contribute to meeting challenges including that of global climate change and the food security and global health and endeavor to examine how the outcomes could increase the benefits in particular to the developing countries. The scope of the initiative is promoting improvements of public health by application of space technology in detail, the spatial epidemiology and the spatial ecotoxicology. The term spatial includes all aspects of space and spatial concepts to perform epidemiological or ecotoxicological investigations and predictions, namely public health, geomatics and teleepidemiology. This contributes to the concept of one health, which means a collaborative effort of multidisciplinary working to attain optimal health for people, animals and environment. Basically we're looking on a risk and response cycle. On the left hand side we identify the risk, on the right hand side we allocate the resources, mainly limited resources, according to this risk. And by an integrated approach we optimize the uh, use of available resources according to public health risks. The space technology can be helpful in many ways in this cycle. Uh, first of all, mentioned remote sensing or robust voice communication on response side or tracking resources by um, a global positioning system and so on. For spatial epidemiology, the risk and response cycle means we identify the temporal spatial risk of a disease vector, for example, a mosquito. A remote sensing can help to identify environmental conditions that trigger these vector. On the other side, the temporal spatial uh, map of, of resources uh, can help to identify uh, the fogging larvicides uh, application of mosquito nets and public awareness uh, strategies and capacity building programs for uh, vector control units or social workers in a special area that is uh, suffering from a special disease caused by uh, a vector. For ecotoxicology, uh, we're looking also on temporal spatial risk map for a disease or toxic exposure. On the response side, um, the allocation of resources and use of space technology uh, is focusing, for example, on precision farming for tailored application of pesticides. This includes um, also um, low-cost precision farming approaches for tailored application of pesticides that can be used in developing countries just by using smartphone technology that accesses uh, a risk mapping uh, for a special area of agricultural production. There are two sides for the benefits. One is the economic uh, side of pesticides reduction. The other uh, benefit is the public health benefit by minimizing the exposure to pesticides for farm workers and uh, people living in that area. The time frame for the Action Team 6 follow-up initiative is three years starting uh, at the Committee of Useful, Peaceful Youth for Outer Space Technology in February 2012 with the site meeting and will end uh, in February 2015 uh, with a milestone as a final report into the Committee of Peaceful Use of Outer Space with a definition of the next step after this uh, three years time. So we have three options at the end uh, of the uh, initiative which is closing the initiative, prolong the initiative for two more years 
or integrate the initiative in other um, UN programs or initiatives or uh, UN bodies. As mentioned before, we have the two pillars, political facilitator and the open community of practice. At the site meeting of the initiative at UN OSA Committee of Peaceful Use of Outer Space, where participants had to be appointed as delegates by the member states, uh, we have the same structure for the open community of practice, especially the international expert meeting in 2013 in the time zone of El Salvador, which we are currently in. Um, it has also these two pillars. One is the Embassy of El Salvador, which is responsible for bilateral relationships between Germany and El Salvador as organizers of the international expert meeting. And uh, the community of practice where we, we have an international link, which is targeting a wider target audience for knowledge sharing, development and implementation, um, which is addressing um, teleepidemiology, spatial ecotoxicology, public health, or in general, One Health, which includes uh, environmental health and public health. The main objective, according to the UN's uh, Unispace 3 recommendations, is to improve public health by application of space technology, with the emphasis on improve public health and not on maximize the use of a certain piece of technology. Derived from this objective, the, the product of the open community of practice uh, is to improve public health. Um, it has two pillars. One is open source, where the product is a GIS software, for example, and open content, where product is, for example, e-learning courses or Wikipedia content. According to the product, we have a priority on using uh, open source and open content resources and the development will be focused on these resources because they can be de uh, used directly without if you have financial constraints. If we don't have financial constraints as an institution, the institutions are assumed to have enough money to re-implement the open source uh, solution into their commercial software environment. The logic of open source is very simple. Um, if you want to improve public health and we create financial barriers, then less people can access the risk mitigation tools and so less people will benefit from uh, these tools. At the same time, all institutions are free to re-implement the open source solution into, into their commercial software environment. and uh, and they don't have to change uh, their commercial software environment into open source, open content environment. First of all, we define open community approach. Uh, open community is a generalization of the concept of open source to other collaborative effort. The term open for an open community refers to the opportunity for anyone to join and contribute to the collaborative effort. The direction and the goals are determined collaboratively by all members of the community. The resulting work, the product, is made available under a free license so that other communities can adapt and build on them. In this context, the product of an open community is an improved public health by application of space technology. An open community uh, provides a networking hub for improvement of public health services by application of space technology. As mentioned before, it operates on a joint repository of resources which contains open source or no con open content resources. The research and implementation environment for this is the living lab, which is, uh, in incorporates multi-stakeholders, which is user-driven and participatory. You have a joint depot of resources to accomplish the Action Team 6 objectives and the member states or an institute or non-governmental agency can take resources from the joint depot, they use it and improve it nationally and return the improved resource for further use back to the joint depot. As an example of a resource, I take the course material of spatial epidemiology uh, with the application of open source um, geographic information system and the language of this course is English. 
um, an, a member state or an institution can take the course from the depot, maybe a web server, translate the course into Spanish, into a national language, so that it's better applicable and use it nationally. And the Spanish translation of the e-learning course uh, is later returned back to the joint depots for further use by other UN member states. The big benefit of the open source, open content approach is shown in the following diagram. First of all, there is a development that might not be appropriate for your national application. So you add a 10% additional workload uh, to the 90% which you get for free uh, as an open source, open content development. You turn that back to the resource, another member state or yourself can use that 100% for free, replicate uh, the concept in many areas of your, of your country and use it again. If member states cannot afford the um, the 5% workload for the modification of the software and content, they could at least the cover 95% of, of all tasks with the software um, which is provided for free. So even if it's not fully accomplishing the goal, the free um, access to software and content helps to, uh, to apply public health risk mitigation tools. The following diagram is showing you the ratio between the free open usage of software and the, um, and the modifications and workload to change something in the software. The statistical data um, are used from the open source platform sourcewatch.net and it's statistical data of 11 hours from 16 January of 2012. During these 11 hours, we had 4.4 million downloads, which is equivalent to free usage of the software, uh, 4, co around 4,000 code commits, which is 0.1% of improvement of the uh, downloads, 4,105 uh, forum posts, maybe discussions, what are further development of the software, uh, some problems, and 445 three bug tracks so there is an error report which has to be fixed by the open source community. When you think about the structure of the joint resources you think uh, first of all maybe on Wikipedia or any product that are licensed under a Creative Commons uh, license model but also the videos just like this video presented on the workshop or an international me uh, virtual meeting are um, elements of a joint repository of resources because you can reuse them, look them other um, even if you didn't join uh, the, the expert meeting. Most open source software can be directly installed on a Linux operating system and um, you can share a whole installation uh, with, other, uh, with other member states without the commercial uh, license restriction because you have to pay for an additional inst installation additional money. In our context we think about smartphones uh, with a GPS receiver on it mainly as a, um, a decision support client for risk and resources but in general it's also a telephone which uh, voice communication. So if we want to use this audio channel also for an automatic risk and response support for the cell phone, we can use it together with open source technology. We use an asterisk uh, open source telephony server with a speech recognition uh, API. And this speech recognition API allows us for an automated guidance of the user through, um, through a decision support tree. So what you see by these examples is that uh, there are many existing open source, open content developments out there and what we do in an open community, we use them to the benefit of public health risk mitigation. And so there is still a lot of uh, work to do to combine this existing speech recognition software with the telephony server and combine it with the uh, risk um, decision support system for public health risk and public health resources. But these steps have to be performed and then we have a generic open source environment that can be used for multiple uh, public health risk mitigation strategies. The member states can use this capacity building and learning environment for spatial epidemiology for example also 
for a productive system with real public health data which is uh, collected in the member states and they do a spatial analysis on and do the risk mapping or do a spatial analysis on the available resources. The main benefit is that the software and the content can freely distribute it at universities or uh, um, schools that support or educate vector control units. Nevertheless, if there are institutions that can afford commercial software, they can do it and do the capacity building material with the commercial software. Um, but for developing countries, there must be an alternative where they can take and use the software without any commercial contract. Due to financial crisis, also other member states will look on the total cost of ownership of public health response measures and they might also uh, use the free available resources for solving public health problems in their countries. Public health data might not be shared by the member states due to um, data protection uh, policy. So for sharing and capacity building, the protected public health data uh, is replaced by generated sample data that is, uh, facilitate the user to, uh, inter uh, to, to check the environment and learn with the environment and for a productive system, the gen uh, generated sample data will be replaced by uh, real data of the member states or the, or the agency. Finally, I want to comment on the workshop procedure and living labs. First of all, the presentation are recorded as a video or screencast and they will be available as capacity building material and also for the international conference. Um, we have the structure that the videos are play, uh, played back at fixed time and date at the regional meeting points all over the world. And after the meeting, we have a video conference where they um, where participants can pose questions, provide feedback, develop uh, some things further, or suggest some collaboration for further development. And the last year in the time zone of Germany, 2012, um, there was a suggestion to reduce the presentation time and increase the, the time for discussion and, um, and feedback. So this year we have uh, the ratio one-third presentation, two-thirds of discussion. The results of the workshop or the international expert meeting should provide, and this is the step we have to go uh, for now, is to provide info for, uh, for uh, living labs that use for public health risk mitigation. In the context of 86 follow-up initiative, Living labs are regarded as a participatory research and in uh, research and implementation environment to support also developing countries. Because uh, strategies, risk mitigation strategies that work in urban areas might fail in in rural areas and vice versa. And so, uh, in the living lab, local administration, farm owners, farm workers, um, or representatives of farm workers are. Uh, involved logistic experts, GIS experts, public health experts, public health agencies, medical experts uh, and ICT experts are looking jointly on a problem from different um, angles and contribute to a joint problem solving activity. So the, the objective is again improve public health by application of space technology and uh, even if there is the smartphone involved that uses GIS tailored information for public health risk mitigation or low cost precision farming, the, the space technology contributes to the, uh, to the risk mitigation. A living lab should solve a problem locally so that it creates benefits for the risk exposed people living in rural areas. On the second level, it is uh, wrap with the research environment to derive generic risk mitigation strategies from a local environment as a case study so that it's be ap applicable in other areas in the country with different requirements on constraints as well. The third level is again the international United Nations perspective to share member state solutions with other member states so that they can benefit from uh, 
the solutions developed maybe in one country in El Salvador and use it in, in Nicaragua or anywhere else that suffering, for example, with a large number of uh, chronic kidney disease fed. Last but not least, I want to thank especially Her Excellency Ambassador Anita Escher from the Embassy of El Salvador in Berlin, who facilitated the link between the political stakeholders and the university for, for preparing this second pilot uh, of an international expert meeting. Finally, we all have to thank uh, all the developers and supporters of open source and open content software, which provided these great tools for creating a, a video, for creating uh, GIS risk maps or any other great tools that uh, are applicable for public health risk mitigation. I think this, uh, this philosophy of community shared problem solving is really a good uh, concept which matches with United Nations, which means to unite nations to provide mutable benefits for all member states. And thank you for contributing to this idea.